Today on Bears TV, we're going to show you why all these tiny little black rocks just aren't the same. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV, where each week we cover a new topic related to reefing. This week we're going to explore activated carbon. We'll talk about what it's for, show you what makes each type of carbon different, show you how to use carbon in your tank, including a quick demo on the performance difference between media bags and reactors. Carbon is used to remove a large range of contaminants and organic compounds from the tank, most of which are the result of continually adding foods, fish waste, and algae breaking down over time. Carbon is also capable of removing many medications, water treatments, and accidental contaminants that may have been introduced to the tank by accident. Removing all of these contaminants is just part of maintaining a healthy reef tank. However, one of the biggest reasons reefers use carbon is to remove yellowing pigments in the water that impact perceived coral coloration and light penetration. You may be thinking your tank isn't yellow, but the chances are it is. The best way to find out for sure is just remove the water from the tank into a white container that's about the same depth as your tank, like a five gallon bucket. This will show exactly how yellow the water is, especially when you set some freshly mixed salt water next to it. With proper use of carbon, it's absolutely possible to return this yellow tank water to its naturally pristine blue. Your corals and fish will look better and you'll get better light penetration. In a previous video related to when to change your carbon, we measured the impact of yellowing water on PAR and showed a reduction of almost 500 PAR. Close to a quarter of the light was being filtered out before it hit the bottom of the tank. We spent a fortune on our light, so it seems kind of silly to let yellow water or a few bucks of carbon get in the way of getting the most from our purchases. Behind all the brand names, there's three basic types of carbon commonly offered to the aquarium industry, bituminous, lignite, and specialty carbon. Well, they all look pretty similar at the microscopic level. They all have very different pore structures and will absolutely work differently in the aquarium. Something we'll demonstrate in just a moment. Each source material's pore network has unique properties that are ideal for different contaminants. You want to select a carbon known for having a pore structure similar in size to the molecules you're trying to remove. For instance, carbon produced from bituminous coal has a network of very small pores, and carbon produced from lignite has a very large average pore size. If we're trying to remove a small molecule like chlorine, bituminous would be a good choice. However, in the actual aquarium, we're attempting to remove much larger dissolved organic compounds and color pigments, so the larger pore network found in lignite carbon will perform much better. But that's not the end of the considerations. So let's talk about which one you should use, and the answer is any of them will likely work, but what you really want to know is which one is the best available, or which one is simply the best value, which is weighting performance and price together. Even though it isn't the best performing carbon in a reef tank because of the smaller pore structure, bituminous carbon is the most commonly used carbon in our industry and what's used in most retail brands of aquarium carbon. The reason it's the most common is likely because it's a harder carbon which has less dust and it's easier to rinse. Bituminous carbon is also a very inexpensive commodity in the open market which allows it to make it through the retail distribution chain and still be pretty affordable. In the aquarium you can expect above average performance, low dust, easy rinsing and it should be pretty affordable. Again, this is what most reefers have been using for years if they're buying common retail brands of carbon. Lignite carbon's larger pore structure is going to perform better in the aquarium at removing those larger dissolved organic compounds and yellowing pigments most reefers are utilizing carbon for. While lignite costs a few bucks more, it's still very affordable. We sell about three times as much lignite as bituminous here at BRS because of the higher performance. I think the reason it isn't as widely adopted in the retail market is because lignite's a softer carbon, which means it has a lot more dust and it's more difficult to rinse. While it does only take a couple minutes to rinse, two minutes can seem like an eternity versus the 15 seconds with other carbon types. Within lignite carbon, you'll find small and large granule options. The large granule is what most of you are familiar with and a size that works in most types of equipment. I'd recommend that most people start with large. The smaller carbon granules, however, have a larger volume of exposed surface area and the granules are more tightly compacted together which allows for less channeling. These things combined will make the smaller granules perform significantly better, but be prepared, they're very small and very dusty so they can be difficult to use in some equipment. The third type of carbon we sell is called ROX 0.8. While there's a price premium on this specialty carbon, it makes up almost 70% of our total carbon sales because it has some pretty unique advantages. 
ROX is a proprietary blend of different carbon sources which have been powdered and extruded into these tiny pellets. The result is a wide array of pore sizes, making it the best at removing the largest variety of different contaminants. The tiny pellets are also super hard, which makes them almost dust free and they rinse in seconds. ROX 0.8 is really designed for ultra pure water applications like pharmaceutical intermediaries where contaminant removal standards are not only extreme, but it's also critical that the carbon itself adds as little to the water as possible. We're going to demonstrate the effect of source material and pore sizes with a few standard tests within the activated carbon industry that look for the quantity of specific pore sizes within a carbon's pore network. These tests are used every day to select the appropriate carbon for specific applications. The three main ones are the iodine number, which measures the preference and ability to absorb small molecules, the methylene blue test, which tests for the ability to remove medium-sized molecules, and the molasses efficiency test, which tests for the ability to remove larger molecules. We set up this station to help give you a visual representation to some of the things we just explained. Since we're not overly concerned with small molecule contaminants in the aquarium, we focus on the medium and large pores with the methylene blue and molasses. Each segment of the tank has 200 grams of carbon in a BRS reactor and heated RODI water. To that, we added a teaspoon of dissolved blackstrap molasses to each chamber as well as 10 milliliters of methylene blue. In the first chamber, we have the ROX 0.8. The proprietary mix of carbons and wide range of pore sizes is going to result in what you might expect, which is almost complete removal of both the molasses as well as the methylene blue. The second chamber contains a lignite carbon, which also demonstrates what you might expect. Almost complete removal of the larger molecule molasses, but less of a preference for the medium-sized blue molecules. The last two chambers have bituminous carbon. Number three has our special grade bituminous carbon. Our BRS bituminous carbon is a bit different than most because we selected a grade that splits the difference between typical bituminous carbon and lignite. So rather than having mostly small pores, it has a larger quantity of medium and some larger pores. As you can see, it removes most of the contaminants, but the green tint means it left some of both yellow and blue pigments behind. That last chamber contains a large pelletized bituminous carbon, which you can see performs pretty poorly in this demonstration. These large pellets are pretty common in retail products within our industry. They look nice and uniform, so if you didn't know any better, you might assume they're better. In reality, these large pellets are designed for air and gas filtration and perform very poorly in water due to available surface area, channeling effects, and small pore structure. The only time I tend to use a carbon like this might be for filtering odors from air air or ozone. Using carbon in the aquarium is super easy. An ideal solution is a reactor like the BRS reactor where you can ensure the entire volume of the aquarium water passes through the carbon several times a day. Just add some carbon to the cartridge and use the foam pad to hold the carbon in place. We don't want to allow the carbon to tumble because eventually it will just grind itself to dust, which we obviously want to avoid. And tumbling has no real performance advantages. In most cases, the BRS mini reactor would hold an ideal amount of carbon securely. Once it's assembled, turn on the feed pump and flush the fines out into a bucket. It shouldn't take more than 10 to 20 seconds to completely rinse any type of carbon this way. Second method of utilizing carbon in the tank is just throw some in a media bag, rinse it under some cold tap water, or even better, some RODI, and place it in a high flow area of the sump. I don't typically use lignite in media bags because of the dust, but you could if you want. When rinsing your media in the bag, the tendency is to try to wash it between your hands, but all you're doing is grinding the pieces against each other and creating more dusty fines. Just let the water flow through the bag and reposition it to let the flow of water do the work for you. We get asked all the time how big a difference there is between running carbon in a media bag and a reactor. One of our customer service agents here, Josh, asked me to run a quick test before we broke down this station, which was a great idea. We started with the same amount of methylene blue and molasses in each chamber, 200 grams of ROX carbon in a reactor in chamber one, 200 grams of ROX carbon in a filter bag in chamber two, and double the amount of ROX with 400 grams in chamber three. I have to say we were all pretty surprised by the results. The reactor removed most of the contaminants in about 75 minutes again. The media bags were pretty far behind at that point, which was expected. Since the bags were believed to be at such a disadvantage, we let it run for a full eight hours. I have to say the results were pretty stunning. 
Well, it took seven times as long and the effectiveness endpoint for the bags is likely to be significantly shorter as well. There's no denying a well-placed filter bag of carbon is more effective than most people would think and a legit option if you don't have room or budget for a reactor. One last note on aquarium carbon. Everyone wants to know how long it will last. There just isn't a one size fits all answer to this because everyone's tank is different and one person can easily add five times as much food as someone else. Thing is, a vast majority of a carbon's effectiveness is going to be in the first three to seven days after it's added to the water. After that, the pore structure is likely to get increasingly fouled with biofilm, bacteria, detritus, and all the other junk floating around in our tanks. That white bucket test we talked about earlier is probably your best reference point on when to change your carbon. You can leave carbon in quite a while and it won't hurt anything, but your best practice is probably to use small amounts and change it as frequently as every week. That said, I know most people replace their carbon every other week or even monthly. We have years and years of videos we've been releasing every week and they only get better, so hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on next week's. If you can't wait, here are a few other interesting ones, like what makes a pH probe lab grade anyways, a demo on the effects of red slime remover, and an oldie but goodie, how to make a screen net top. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.